This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by the North Law Firm for car accidents and negligent security cases. Call Joe at 239-337-1191. And by Lee Health. Good evening, Southwest Florida. Welcome to another edition of Leap is Live. Where are we? We're at McGregor Clinic right here in the heart of Fort Myers. We want to thank them for hosting us for the next uh, three weeks. We have a fabulous show in store for you today. Get a chance to hear from Tashika Perry. Girl talk was here as we the fabulous Tashika Perry get you ready for the new year. We also get a chance to talk to Sylvester Smalls. That's Lieutenant. He's the officer of the year for all of Lee County. Uh, he was selected and he's uh, with the Sheriff's Office of Lee County. Then we'll go out to the NAACP Gala where you get a chance to see some interviews I got to do out there as well. All that's happening on Leap is Live is happening right now and we'll be right back. Welcome back Southwest Florida. So thrilled to get an officer of the law here to protect and serve on a Lee County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office finest, Sylvester. Lieutenant, you, uh, congratulations. Uh, you got recently got promoted to lieutenant, right? Yes, sir. What were you prior to that? I was a patrol sergeant in uh, Central District. What is when you become a lieutenant? What, I know you get a couple of more dollars, but what does that do? You in charge of more people, or what? It's just prestige. Um, it's a it's a it's a step up. Obviously, it's um, more of an assistant command position. Good. That, whereas a sergeant, you know, first line, you know frontline supervisor. Mm -hmm. Now, you were recently selected as the officer of the year, not for just Lee County Sheriff's Office, but for all of Lee County, anybody who's involved in law enforcement, you were, you were selected as the person of the year. Yes, sir. Uh, so all of uh, Southwest Florida, which includes Cape Coral, uh, Sanibel, and the, uh, the schools also in addition to Fort Myers. Did you ever, you know, project yourself to do that or it just happened based on all this stuff that we're going to talk about? Um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't think nothing of it. It's something that I always done, and, right. you know, as far as working with the kids and whatnot. Right. And we need to let people know also you're a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. Yes, I am. Which uh, I'm a member of. Go yes, Ma. Go Ma. <laughs> Get that little <laughs> plug in, Jerry. <laughs> hey, um, the uh, what goes into the selection process for officer of the year? Some, somebody writes a big nomination thing on you and submit it? Yes, sir. Yeah, your supervisor nominates you, and then they, out of all of the law enforcement agencies, they select the top five finalists. Mm. And then you were told you in the top five, like going into the Hall of Fame, and then finally you were narrowed down to number one? Or they, when you have that banquet that we're seeing footage on, we had that event, that's when they announced it. The yeah, they'll, 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 they will announce it at the at the event. Nobody knows. Everybody gets fitted for the for the ring. Really? Yeah. And uh, no one knows until to that time, to the end of that event. So you get a ring and what else? Um, there's a, a firearm, mm -hmm. um, a trip to the mountains, and um, some from local local places and stuff like your, your local eateries and whatnot. Okay. Now, how do you, how has that changed your life being the officer of the year? You're more famous now. Uh, you getting texts from all the other officers around the region, things like that. Yeah, it's a uh, it's very prestigious. So, you know, I'm honored and blessed. Um, I didn't you know I didn't think nothing of it, and then when they called my name, I was like, you know, <laughs> it's a, it, it's it's changed. It's kind of I would say life changing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, I, I know there are other things that would take into consideration to, for you to become officer of the year with your community involvement, but one of the things that has stood out from me watching what you do is the work that you do with inner city and children in terms of the basketball tournament that you put on. And you've gotten a lot of young men and women scholarships to uh, college. Yeah, we started, I started in uh, 2016 with just some so actually, I started earlier than that with a couple of football players um, that had played at larger universities, and for some reason, things didn't work out right. And um, I made a couple of phone calls to some some coaches who are friends of mine, and they ended up they got scholarships, and then more coaches started calling me. Ooh. And uh, my background is basketball. I played collegiate basketball. Okay. And um, I started going in that route a little more. 
And uh, we had had the first showcase in 2016. Uh, Stefan Schroeder was there. Um, that we called the 2000, the guys that came in 2016, the class that nobody won. No one, no one had a, not even one offer. So I put together um, with the, our local schools, F, um, I'm sorry, FSW, um, Ave Maria, St. Thomas in Miami, Florida National also in Miami. They came down and watched some of the kids and the bulk of them were juniors at the time and they, they liked what they saw. And fast forward to 2018, out of those groups, we ended up having five Division One that went on to play Division One, and a total of 20, over 23 or 24 that, that signed scholarships. Now, uh, a few months ago, I got a chance to come out to one of your events at, uh, I think it was at Lehigh Senior High. Yes, sir. And it was a nice turnout, and I just, all those basketball players coming from all around to get that exposure, and I saw some big-name coaches there. Kind of describe who was there and the types of student, uh, where all those basketball players came from? Well, the bulk of them were from Lee County, Charlotte yeah. County, um, uh, Collier, and we also had some kids as far as Wisconsin and that kind of thing. Um, Pat Gale from St. Thomas University was there, which he is now the head coach of, um, of Albany State. Um, Charles Almagoo was an assistant at St. Thomas, and now he's the assistant uh, head coach at um, Coppin State up in, I think it's Washington. Okay. The, um, the name of the tournament, you named it after Stefan, right? Correct. Go ahead and elaborate on that. Uh, 2016, Stefan, he, he was the best player in, in the, at that particular time in the first, the, uh, the first showcase. Um, we actually stopped it right in the middle and said, that's how you play. And um, Coach Gale, who's at Albany State, immediately took a liking to him. And there were some other coaches. And I was going to, um, I, I, because this was in June, and I, I was like, well, we'll bring him, I'll bring him to you guys, and, you know, you can take a look at him. And um, he can also, um, you know, have a conversation, because he's had his doubts about his size and, and that kind of thing. And uh, I said, we'll do it at the end of July. Because I normally take kids with me. We go to the Carolinas, North Carolinas, Georgia, and, and that kind of thing. I said, well, well, I'll be bringing him in July. Unfortunately, he was murdered a couple of weeks before I was supposed to bring him. Amazing. And uh, I got with his parents. And because uh, his parents, you know, they always came to my events. So I said, if I can change the name in his honor. Mm. And uh, they agreed. That's a great tribute. Now, a lot of times when I'm talking to you in non- TV settings, of course, me and you text and we talk to each other. You on the road a lot, going, visiting places. And I ask you one time, I say, are you spending your own money on gas and all this, taking these kids to these college campuses? And you said yes, and you, you said it like it was a, a joy for you to even do that. Yeah, a lot, of ki uh, a lot of coaches think that the Carolinas got the lock on some of these kids from Fort Myers, which, you know, I, I am from Charleston, South Carolina. I got a lot of resources there. Uh, it's easier for me, you know, financially, and um, it, it also gives these kids something different to look at. Um, the first group I took, um, we were we were going to my grandmother's house, and I asked them about T Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know Harriet Tubman. I said, you know, she, one of her battles at the Cumbie River is right there, right down the street from my grandma. It's like, oh no, but thank God for technology kids started looking it up on their uh, iPhone, smartphone, or whatever, mm -hmm. and they said, some, wow. And from there, at the time, uh, the Confederate flag thing was a big thing in Lee County. Right. So when we got to Charleston, you know, my parents' place, I took them where the first shot of the Civil War was fired. Right, right on, the right on that water there. For something. Yeah, I took that, that, that little cruise out there, little tour out there. It was yeah. very educational. And then we also go, went to, uh, I took them to the market, and they was like, where is this? I said, your ancestors were probably sold right there. And uh, they explained that to them and they were like, wow. So then again, you see the smartphones come out again. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting so that now, first hand now, education. Yep. Yeah, so now it starts registering. And at the end of the day, I take them to the, you know, I take them to the colleges. We go less than three miles from where the first shot was fired. They go to the College of Charleston. They see the kids walking in the sandal, the beach type setting. 
Then we go about five miles down the line, they go to the Citadel. Mm -hmm. And they see the guys that are, are, are clean cut mm -hmm. and walking through class. And one of the guys recognized one of the guys, you know, from Fort Myers. And he go, I couldn't believe he couldn't talk to me. And he was upset. So when he go in and met the coach and he's like, yeah, he's only got, he's got less than five minutes to get from one end of the campus to the other. This is first, you know. All business. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, they, they get to experience that and get to look at that. And uh, then we go to Charleston Southern mm -hmm. and it, it ended up seeing six or seven schools, you know, in that time frame. What does it do for you personally to know that you're impacting these young men like that? I see the change, you know, you, you look for the change and you see the guys, the kids, their, their gears start turning. And um, in that first, that first wave, we had seven kids playing in South Carolina. And they, uh, they take the like, and they like the scenery. You know, some of the guys like the, like North Carolina, the Continental Divides and things. They just like a different change of pace. So the Lee County School District is on the map in terms of uh, basketball players and other athletes around the, around the country, right? Yeah, they, uh, they, they know what we're doing in Lee County, and we, I get a call all the time. Um, I know two teams in South Carolina, they want to come down and play. And um, I plan to hopefully, if everything checks out okay, to take about 10 girls, 10 guys to South Carolina mm -hmm. so they can, you know, they can play with them and those guys are going to come back up here. Okay. Have something. you built a relationship with the superintendent of Lee County School District? I know somebody who knows somebody who can introduce <laughs> yeah, I, you. Yeah, I met him when we talked <laughs> about <it. laughs> Inside joke. Well, man, congratulations on that award. You're a role model and certainly we need to... Uh, get you, uh, continue to get you exposed to a lot more people and let people uh, know all the great work that you do in the community. Yeah, and it's not just athletes, you know. Um, we we have guys, you know, technically are not good enough, but they want to be around their friends and they still want to go through the uh, college experience. And so we have some of them that are equipment managers and stuff, and they said, man, you know, it's good work study. I'll be an equipment manager all day. I see. Yeah, and, you know, I pretty much a free education and um, that's what we're pushing and you're pushing that education uh and higher education what at the high school level you're emphasizing too for them to keep oh, we go, gpas up yeah i go all the way down to middle school okay and you know everybody wants to play unfortunately we can't have it everybody play in the um the showcase but they you know i call them the pit bulls those guys that are right on the borderline and my main thing to them is keep that grades up, keep, right. that, keep the GPA up, because even some school, some teams have a, a JV team where, they, where if the basketball thing didn't work out, they can play JV, and if they got over 3-0, they can get money. Uh, gotcha. Let's bump you out. Man, you're so quiet, man. I didn't know you were going <laughs> to give me all of that. Oh. <laughs> I got you talking. Uh, as the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like the good lieutenant here, the officer of the year for Lee County who are doing it. Come back to Sheikah Perry. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching Lee Pitts Live. Of course, I'm Lee Pitts, the host of Lee Pitts Live. We're here at the Holiday Inn Airport in Fort Myers, and I want you to continue to watch Lee Pitts Live on television, on YouTube, and of course, listen to us on radio. But to get all of your shows to come right to you, just click on that subscribe button right there, and Lee Pitts Live will come right to you, your time, your way. That's Lee Pitts Live.